Okay, here we're going to look at some of the details in the animal phyla. We can see everything from sponges to cnidarians to whales to sea stars to worms all fit into this very large and diverse phyla that we might be most familiar with. So first off, looking at the general features of animals, and I can kind of fit myself in the mix here. I'll kind of put myself right there because I do qualify, uh, as do all humans here. So animals are heterotrophs, meaning they do not make their own food, they need to consume it. Uh, plants and autotrophs are the ones that would make their own food. Animals do not. Uh, multicellular, so they have a mitochondria, but lack a cell wall. As a result, animal cells can be quite flexible. They can move from place to place. They're diploid, they have diverse forms and habitats, as we can just see from the image here. Reproduce mostly by sexual reproduction, have a common pattern of development, and have unique tissues. So general features of animals. Well, invertebrates account for 99% of all species uh, in the animal kingdom. Most occur actually in the sea. Uh, three phyla dominate animal life on Earth. Um, Arthropodia, mollusks, and chordates. So while we may think of kind of, you know, our most favorite animals, or what we think is the most kind of common, uh, Arthropodia is by far the greatest, and invertebrates account for 99% of all species. So just be mindful um, of that, of how that 1%, those invertebrates, uh, those chordates, uh, are a very, very small um, total amount of species. So looking at the family tree, uh, animals consist of 35 very different phyla. Uh, taxonomists traditionally have compared anatomical features. The end result, though, is phylogenies. Um, so we're looking at the domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. Here we're looking at the phyla level. Um, so we're looking here kind of at this bar here and working at being more specific. So all animals uh, in this case are in the kingdom Animalia and are all in the domain Eukarya. And we're looking at separating out that phyla to be a little bit more specific. So within this animal family tree here, uh, the traditional animal phylogy is being revised. Molecular systemics, uh, systematics, I should say, are used uh, uses unique gene sequences to detect relatedness and construct phylogenetic trees. We're getting away from the phenotypic features and getting more into the genotypic features. As a result, this has created new divisions and new ways to divide different things to really see what is connected looking at the genetics of those. Now, the current look here, we can kind of see our um, having tissues or no tissues. So this would be our common ancestor way down here. No tissues going off to the left, tissues going off to the right. So everything here, in, including or having tissues, sponges or peripheral, not including tissues. Within there, we can have radial symmetry or bilateral symmetry. We're looking at a whole bunch of different other ways to divide things. Uh, there's animals molt, we have protosome development or deuterosome development, uh, different ways, again, to kind of separate things and classify them. Uh, lastly, the cladogram with key branch points. This gives you another idea of a way to break things apart, uh, looking at having vertebra, having jaws or lungs or forelimbs and legs or amniotic egg. How would, they, how would things be separated and what would be considered to be more complex? So while this is a very diverse uh, phylum that we might be familiar with, this hopefully makes it a little bit easier to at least associate some of the physical features when we're looking at developing branch points within that phyla.